This is the Cat's Eye Nebula. It's over 27,000 trillion kilometers from Earth. But we see its astonishing beauty thanks to one extraordinary telescope, Hubble. A giant gas cloud appears in breathtaking detail. We track the weather on Mars and study the atmosphere of a planet 150 light years from Earth. Hubble shows us the universe in a new light. Hubble is the flagship of our fleet, plain and simple. Mankind has always been fascinated by the stars above, and the world's greatest telescope delivers them in revolutionary clarity, because it's in orbit 480 kilometers above us, free from all the distortion of Earth. When a distant star emits a beam of light, it launches it on a journey across unimaginable distances. The light travels at 300,000 kilometers a second across the cold, clean clarity of space. For 12 billion years, it can hurtle towards a final target, our eyes. But in the last 500th of a second, the light slams straight into Earth's atmosphere. Above our heads, the air disrupts the passage of starlight. We see the distortion every time we gaze up at the night sky. The stars themselves don't twinkle, it's the air. Mountain air is thinner, drier, cleaner, so telescopes on lofty peaks can get a crisper image, but they're still not high enough. To truly see the stars in crystal clarity, to try to define the size and age of the universe, scientists need a whole new type of telescope. One far above the smog, the dust, and the air itself. It was clear to the entire astronomical community that to make progress in that field, it was necessary to go to space. A giant telescope in orbit will capture the light fresh from the stars themselves. It will also test the limits of earthbound engineering. Dominic Tenerelli is there from the start. There were several of us who took it as a, as a personal responsibility to make sure that we were going to provide the finest telescope that had ever been built. Hubble is one of the 20th century's greatest feats of engineering. The final design combines 400,000 components and 45,000 kilometers of wiring in a telescope the size of a bus. It was going to be one of the largest telescopes that we had on the planet, but only now flying above the clouds. Lockheed's Jim Crocker remembers the key challenges Hubble's engineers had to tackle. How good the optics are, how big the optics are, and how stable you can hold them. Those three things really set the limit to what Hubble could accomplish. The first major design hurdle is the mirrors at the telescope's core. Hubble is a reflecting telescope. It collects photons of light from distant stars using a giant concave mirror. The light gathered by the first mirror then bounces onto a second, smaller convex one. This in turn reflects it back through a hole to form a focused, bright image. Constructing these light-collecting optics is a Herculean task. It takes engineers four million man-hours to design and build the mirrors. The optics were the heart of the telescope. Uh, everything depended on the quality of the optics and the preciseness of its prescription. The mirror's weight must be kept to a minimum. So they set the glass in a sandwiched honeycomb structure. This drops the weight from 3,600 kilos to 800 kilos, but keeps it strong enough to withstand blast-off. For extra precision, they shape the 2.4 meter wide main mirror using a pioneering computer-controlled rig. The rig carefully polishes the block of glass into the smoothest large surface ever made. 
If the mirror was the size of North America, the tallest bumps on its surface would be just inches high. The telescope will sit above Earth's murky atmosphere, allowing the precise mirror to make a quantum leap in observing power. Once Hubble is launched, it will reveal 100 times more detail than giant ground-based telescopes. But that precision will be wasted if the space telescope itself isn't held rock steady. If you think about it, when you hold your camera, the camera uh, has to be very still when you take a picture so it doesn't blur. And if you have a big telephoto lens on the front of the camera, you have to be even more stable in holding it. The design team turns to a high-grade substance to achieve maximum stability, graphite epoxy. They use it for the struts and supports that hold Hubble's mirrors in place. When Hubble was designed, graphite epoxy was cutting edge in space engineering. Today you'll find it in many tennis rackets and golf clubs. The rigidity and lightness that make it ideal for sports are also key to Hubble. But graphite epoxy's real value lies in how it reacts to temperature changes. In orbit, Hubble travels in and out of the Earth's shadow 16 times a day. As it does, so the temperature changes by more than 37 degrees Celsius. Most materials expand or contract when heated or cooled. But the graphite epoxy structure will deform by only a thirteenth of the amount that a steel version would. It will hardly warp or flex and so will keep the mirrors perfectly aligned. For added protection, the entire telescope is wrapped in reflective thermal blankets and dotted with 800 built-in heaters. They will keep Hubble's core within one degree of room temperature. As you go from day to night, these heaters turn on and off to control the, the temperature very, very accurately. The final challenge is to make sure that Hubble actually works. Finding the right star in the night sky using a powerful telescope in orbit makes finding a needle in a haystack look like child's play. It's like looking for one particular window with a high-powered zoom lens. If you can't see the wider picture, you have no way of knowing if you're even looking in the right area. So the designers equip Hubble's guidance computer with a map of 15 million guide stars. Razor-sharp ridges inside the telescope tube will block any stray light from the sun, earth or moon. This means that only light from the celestial targets will reach the cameras and other instruments behind the main mirror. Each element of Hubble's design needs to work flawlessly for it to succeed. The telescope's prime goal is to build on the work of the man it's named after, Edwin Hubble. He launched a revolution in astronomy and continues to inspire modern scientists, such as the Carnegie Institute's Wendy Friedman. Edwin Hubble was no doubt the greatest astronomer of the 20th century, one of the most remarkable astronomers of all time. In the 1920s, Hubble carefully measured the huge distances of space using giant telescopes in California, and his results shocked the world. There were other galaxies outside the Milky Way, and almost all of them were flying away from us. Hubble discovered that the universe was bigger than anyone had thought, and was getting even larger. Hubble's breakthrough was enormously revolutionary. It completely changed the perception of the universe that we live in. But even using the largest telescopes on Earth, Hubble couldn't measure the exact size and age of the universe. Now, decades later, his mechanical namesake will pick up where he left off. <laughs>